Good evening and welcome to the Hingham Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday evening, March 27th, 2018. Calling the meeting to order, uh, the, the board's first uh, item of business is actually to um, convene an executive session under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, Fire Chief Steve Murphy. The board will reconvene in open session at 7 o'clock. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll be back at 7. Thank you. The uh, Board of Selectmen is returning to open session. The first item on our agenda this evening is the approval of minutes from our uh, March 20th session. I move. To approve the minutes of March 20th, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next item of uh, business on the agenda is public comment on items not on the agenda. Okay, the next item of business is a public hearing on the request of the Hingham Sewer Department to install and maintain approximately 300 feet of 6-inch PVC sewer force main in Shipyard Drive. Steve, is this you? Come on up to the table. Welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. Hi, Harry. Gentlemen. Could, um, uh, Steve, could you just give uh, us and for the benefit of the public just an overview of this project? Yeah, this force main reroute, uh, it's 350 feet going up Shipyard mm. Drive. This is a small segment of the whole force main. And this is part of the uh, Avalon 2 upgrades that we need to do to let those into the system and to deal with the capacity. And Steve, what, when, when this is completed, what, what sort of impact is it going to have to, um, to the sewer customers? <clears throat> well, as it is right now, the force main from the Bradley Wood Station intersects with the force main from Broad Cove. And that, at times, could create a water hammer if the conditions are right. We think that have, may have contributed to those force main breaks that have happened over the years. So if anything, uh, the rerouting of the main would alleviate that. Mm -hmm. And um, when do you propose that this work will take place? How long will it take? Well, we'd like to award in May, and uh, we'd give, I think we're going to give 120 days, so you know, if all goes well, we'd be done by the end of September. I think the actual shipyard drive piece wouldn't take more than uh, you know, under a week. And um, for, um, for any of the sewer customers, what sort of disruption in service might they see during, during any part of this project? The sewer customers won't see any disruption. Okay. And is there any, um, e even though there isn't any disruption, is there any sort of notification that goes on about that the work's happening or? Yes. Yeah, we'll be putting out uh, notices. Okay. Probably door to door. Yeah, thank you. Um, Paul, yeah, Karen, any Karen, any questions? Uh, yeah, two, two quick questions. I, I did see that you do have the um, two weeks prior to the commencement of work. You'll make sure that all the, all the abutters know about mm -hmm. the project. Um, how about, I guess I'm wondering about the hours that you intend to work and just, um, you know, I, I'm trying to visualize where this is with respect to commuter interference. If you're coming in, it's the, it's the far right lane going into the shipyard. Okay. Uh, we've, we've spoken with their personnel. Uh, they don't seem to think there'll be any impact. It's a very wide road, so we can lane right. it off okay. properly. Okay. Uh, the, the work in 3A will be at night. Okay. Uh, and the work on Shipyard Drive will be during the day. Okay. So it doesn't sound like there'll be any um, disruption to parking, and I, I, that is a really wide road, so you just take that far right lane. Very, very minimal. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, because it's on that side, then I, I, I'm wondering where the Brio development is. Will there be more sewer work needed to handle uh, flow as the shipyard builds out residentially? The Rio. Bri <coughs> Brio, the um, the other big uh, residential development, like as you're coming into the shipyard on the far left. Oh no no no, that's no. That's that's separate. That different. goes into the shipyard pump station. Okay, <clears throat> great. All set. Great. 
Um, anyone in the audience have a question or comment about about this this one? Okay, Harry, anything to add? Uh, no, it's pretty uh, specific on the repairs and the construction of the okay. project. Thank you. Do you want to make a motion? Yes, Karen. Metrotz a little sewer. Sure. I move that we approve the request of Hingham Sewer Department to install and maintain approximately 350 feet more or less of six inch PVC sewer force main in Shipyard Drive. The sewer main will be installed in the easternmost most northbound lane of Shipyard Drive from the intersection of HMS Essington Drive to Lincoln Street Route 3A. This extension is for the purpose of rerouting the force main from the Bradley Woods pumping station to a more suitable discharge location. This approval is subject to the stipulation of the Department of Public Works as outlined in the letter dated March 8, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Terrific. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, uh, 710. We have a public hearing on the request of Comcast to install and maintain approximately 480 <coughs> feet of three inch conduit in Hingham Square. Is there anyone here from Comcast? Hi, welcome. Would you want to join us? Sure. <coughs> I'm Harry. Sir, if, if you could please introduce yourself and um, <coughs> give a description of the project. Sure. Uh, my name is Neil Carroll. I'm the contractor that's uh, going to be in charge of the project for Comcast. Um, and what we basically want to do is service uh, a section of South Street. Um, starting at Central Street is a final utility pole there. We're going to go one back because there's too many um, utilities on the <coughs> final pole. And we're going to be digging in the in the street down Central Street, taking a right onto South Street and continuing up to the um, Main Street intersection and through that intersection uh, and servicing the corner building there. So we'll be providing service to all the uh, you know, all the buildings along that pathway that cannot now receive service. And um, has, uh, has the timing both, <coughs> when is this work going to be starting soon? We'd like to do it within the next 30 days. Okay. And has this been coordinated? I, I don't know if this is a question for you, Mr. Carroll, or for Harry, but the Downtown Association and Lynn Barclay is, is the timing of this project and the hours of work, um, is the Downtown Association aware and, and on board with it? Um, I think uh, you got contact of the Downtown Association in, yep. in the uh, late fall. Yep. Um, not to, I don't know if you've talked to them recently about. Not, no, project. not since then. Uh, we plan to do the work in the evening, so all this is night work. There shouldn't be a lot of disruptions starting at 8.30 at night. Most of the business down there are closed. <clears throat> Excuse me, the movie theater and the ice cream parlor, I believe. A couple of restaurants are off South Street. Um, and uh, it shouldn't impact the square. You know, major issue would be they'll be off the road by 5 a.m. And it's not Friday or Saturday nights, right? So no. Sunday through Thursday. Okay. Tom, did you have this had on? originally been requested for last fall, for last December, November, December. And um, in talking to Comcast and Lynn, the uh, consensus was that was their busiest season, the, the merchants. So we wanted to try to not disrupt that season for them. Uh, the Comcast graciously agreed to do it in the spring. Oh. So here we are. So here Thank we you. Are. Great. Great. Did you have any questions, no. Paul? Karen, I, I, I do appreciate that hold off. You know, as <coughs> you may know, we're, um, we're concerned and supportive of our merchants in, in the immediate square and, and really throughout the town. So oh, I, sure. I think it's really helpful for that um, sensitivity. Um, mm -hmm. And I would just encourage you, as it says in the letter, and, and Harry, I, I appreciate the inclusion of Lynn specifically in the letter. Um, I just encourage you to continue to, to um, communicate with Lynn because she can be your voice to the merchants um, so that, you know, I, I think we found from earlier projects, the more people know and can anticipate, sort of the smoother it goes for everybody. Um, so. I didn't want to add it. Neil could correct me if I'm mistaken, but I believe it's only going to take three to four days to get the cable in the ground if there's no problems. Um, we patched every night, and then the final patch will be done sometime in the future, probably June, maybe in July at night again. The hours will still be the same, and that'll be when the final patch will take place, which will be a grind and inlay of new, new wearing surface. Okay. Just so you know, Tuesday is bargain night at the Loring. 
you know, <laughs> asking for a friend here, but just uh, to be mindful of that in front of the movie theater. Is there anyone in, in the audience who has a question or wishes to make a comment on this project? Okay. Let me do it again. Sure. Thank you. Okay. I move that we approve the request of Comcast to install and maintain approximately 480 feet of three-inch conduit in Hingham Square. This conduit will originate from pole number one, Central Street, and continue under the paved surface of Central <coughs> Street and South Street for the entire length to completion at building number eight, Main Street. This project will also include the installation of three vault enclosures in the sidewalk, which will enable service installation for the following addresses, number 51, number 57, and number 65, South Street as well as number eight, Main Street. This approval is subject to the stipulation of the Department of Public Works as outlined in its letter dated October 31st, 2017. Right. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, 7.15, uh, we have uh, two public hearings on requests from uh, Aquarian to install and maintain uh, water mains. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> trying to, I'm trying to figure out. We normally don't get a crowd, so I'm trying to figure out which which <laughs> of these which of these you're here for. Um, Steve, if uh, maybe you could please uh, give an overview of the two projects that you're bringing before the board tonight. Yes, I will. Uh, we're planning to uh, proposing to replace. Um, Water mains on two separate streets, Elmore Road and Hayes Road. Uh, both existing mains are two inches in diameter. Um, we want to replace both with an uh, eight inch ductile iron pipe, 800 feet on Elmore Road and 500 feet on Hayes Road. Um, the purpose of the project is twofold. One, the, the pipes are undersized. We want to increase the flow. But second and most importantly, the mains are shallow and they require us to run bleeders, meaning wasting water in the cold winter months. Um, so by lowering these mains and increasing their size, we'll eliminate the bleeders, which will save water. Um, the amount of water we'll save, you know, when you look at it over the year, could, um, would make room for about uh, 30 single-family homes. So we want to basically trying to save some water here. Um, that's the main reason. So um, it includes uh, a hydrant on each location. Um, we did uh, have a meeting, or we at least advertised for a meeting back in the end of February at the South Shore Country Club. We had two people from Elmore show up, and we talked extensively about that project. Um, nobody from Hayes Road showed up at that meeting. However, I have been in contact with a, a customer and a resident on Elmore Road, uh, Mrs. Daly. Um, Hayes, Road. I mean Hayes, Road. Hayes Road, sorry, Mrs. Daly on, on Hayes Road. And uh, we discussed the location of the proposed hydrant. Um, we're going to work with her to, to find a, a location that's amenable to everyone in the project. Um, we also spoke to the fire chief about the location of the hydrant, and he's fine where, where we come up uh, with the final location for it. So we want to basically uh, make sure it's a convenient uh, location for the, the customers and, and us in the fire department. Yep. Okay. Um, Paul, did you have any questions? No. Karen? Uh, no, not at this time. I'm going to, um, I, I just, again, I'm thinking that people might be here who have a question or something, so I'm going to hold off for a second. Does anybody in the audience have a question or wish to make a comment about this? If I could please, could you come up to the microphone and mm -hmm. that's so that the people at home can hear. Sure. If you could just introduce yourself um, and give your address. Sure. Welcome. Okay. Hi, thank you. Mary Ann Hunter, 5 Hayes Road. And my only concern actually had to do with the pavement because this road had just been paved five years ago. And that was more my concern about repaving the road, like if that would be done when the water main was put sure. in. Sure, thank you. Uh, Harry, do you want to maybe speak to um, speak to that question? Yeah, Hazel will be reserviced from uh, got a line to got a line once the product's complete. Right, thank you. Okay, Great. that was, that was, <coughs> okay, <laughs> terrific. Um, thank you. Thank you. Can, yep. Um, can I just ask about leak history, you know, why you're, why you're picking these two particular the, the primary reason is they're shallow water mains and they have bleeders, meaning um, there's a valve that's open from December through late March, they're open right now, to, and the, they're basically running water to waste in order not to freeze the mains. I see. We're going to have continuously running water, so by lowering the mains in the ground, we'll be able to eliminate the bleeders and save water. I got you. Okay. Steve, um, uh, we, we talked about this a little bit when you were here a couple of weeks ago, and um, I, I just I'm, I'm a little confused with some of the paperwork and I, I don't know if, if these are questions you can answer now 
we, we may need to maybe ask you to follow up with Tom um, after the meeting. So um, as you remember, when you were here for Sherwood and Butler Road, um, I was referencing that, that I had gotten some information <coughs> off the DPU file room about the capital plan because, you know, one of the things we try to do here is just kind of understand, okay, um, you know, this is the work we're going to do. This is how it's going to get paid for. And um, I don't see Hayes and Elmore on the capital plan. And I, I think what, what kind of confused me a little bit is that um, there were some recent filings that were done uh, as part of the information request for the rate case. And it, it looks to me as if the, the storage tank and the Sherwood and Butler projects are being proposed for um, the, the um, a, a water uh, as part of the rate case and a proposed surcharge that the DPU hasn't approved yet. And from what I understand that the DPU schedule, they're not going to approve that till the fall. So I'm, I'm just kind of confused about how some of these projects sure. are going to be paid for? Sure. So um, first off, um, you probably don't see Hayes Road and Elmore in the capital plan that was filed because it was those streets as well as others in Hull are, are rolled into what's called the shallow water main project. Okay. It, it was also called the bleeder project. That should be on there. Shallow water mains. And there's a number of uh, streets in Hingham and Hull that are included in that project. And it's a two-year project. This is year one or phase one of the project. Um, and the other question you had about um, the rate case and capital plans, we had an amendment and it's called a, a, um, um, a RIM project. Yep. And that's basically to, um, uh, due to the changing of the, uh, the tax laws, um, we're gonna see some savings. So the 14.7% the uh, increase comes down to about a thir little 13.3% increase on average. And what we wanted to do with that savings is reinvest it into the, into the system, in, in infrastructure. So the amendment come up with uh, some additional capital improvements or investments that we would do with that on average $1 million per year. Right. So th there, was, there are supplemental projects in that amendment, the RIM amendment, which are different than the original projects that were in the original submittal about a year ago, the five-year right. capital improvement plan. And as I looked at some of those things, I, it, it looks like some things have shifted. And again, I, I know we're not, we're not here tonight talking about yep. the, the rate case in that program. And I don't, I, uh, um, but as, as I looked at it, um, I noticed that the project we approved for Sherwood and Butler is part of this pending case in front of the DPU that's not approved, which got me a little bit concerned because um, it the DPU hasn't signed off on that so I what I was going to suggest for my colleagues and uh, is that um, I wondered if it would be possible to ask you and I, I can I can give you copies I can give you these documents but I think it would just help us to know before we give permission to open up the road and see <clears throat> where things are to say here's here's the source of funding for, for, for Hayes and Elmore because I also see that, that there are bleeder shallow mains in the RIM program. And I, I just want to kind of understand where things are. And what I would ask is if you, know, if, if you could put that maybe in a memo to Tom and then we can get it on an agenda. I, you know, I, I know you want to get in and do the work when it's good weather. We're meeting uh, pretty much every Tuesday, we're, I don't think we're meeting on the 20th. So if, if we can get that information, we're happy to put it on, on think, our agenda. I think part of the DPU's order to us was to reach out to the communities and try to set up meetings to explain the RIM amendment and go over it. I know we met, recently met with the town of Oxford, so we'd be happy to meet with you <coughs> and uh, answer any and all questions you have. Yeah, well, and I think council has, um, has, has uh, suggested that any discussions about the rate case, that those be handled through council because that's pending okay. in the DPU. I think for us, it's just, you know, again, just in terms of the operations, we just want to know, Elmore and Hayes, is this part of the capital plan? Kind of what's the source of funding? And I think that way then we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that rate process play out 
you know, out, outside of our work. Um, I, can, I can give you these documents that, um, that were from the file room. They might just kind of help you see maybe why, why I had a couple questions. And your specific question is where is the source of funding for Elmore and Hayes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would, um, that would be very helpful. In, the, in addition to that, it, it's the original rate case or the amendment, the RIM amendment. Is it from the original or the RIM amendment? Is that kind of? Well, again, I, I guess to, to me as I look at it, um, since the DPU has <coughs> not really formed an opinion on a rate case, and I understand that, that that will be happening late in the summer or the fall, it would seem to me that, that um, we wouldn't want to spend those dollars until the DPU has, has awarded the rate case. It's, it's kind of like for our board when the, you know, we, if we have a reserve fund transfer, we don't go to the advisory committee after we've spent the money mm -hmm. and ask for it. We, we make sure we have the clearance from the advisory right. committee to, to spend it. So it would seem to me, and, and again, I, I, um, it would seem to me that the water main work that we would be doing right now would be getting spent out of the existing capital plan. It is. Because that's all the money that's authorized. I'll just give you these because sure. the, these documents confused me a little when I saw Sherwood and Butler sure. and the tank. So um, if, if you can work with Tom to just get that clarification for the board, we'd be happy to take this up in, sure. in one of our next couple meetings and, um, uh, and take a vote at that time. If, if my colleagues are amenable to that. Yeah, no, I, I think it would just help to understand where the, yeah. where the money's coming <clears throat> from on that. Okay. And um, so you note, or, or um, I guess, Harry, you note that Elmore is a private way, so when, when we issue this grant of location, we're not really issuing a grant of location for Elmore Road, right? It's just to the extent that that impacts any road opening on Linden Road. So what's the protocol for performing work on a private way in terms of getting the sign-off from those, those abutters to that private way? Let's show up to the uh, utility contractor and the residents on, on the uh, mm -hmm. private way. Um, they're tying into um, uh, Linden Road in two locations to make that connection, and that's what the grand location is for, so if they can have the right to tie into Linden Road, and then they'll also make the same repairs, crib to crib overlay, the entire length of that area with it being connected from one end to the other. Okay. I guess a little bit what I'm concerned about is just, um, you know, you, you've spent a long time crafting this letter of restrictions, and you know, in order for, when we grant um, the issuance of a, lo, you know, a grant of location, when, when we say in the vote it's subject to this letter, it's, you know, a couple pages long and it, it provides stuff like notice to abutters and you're going to clean up your stuff and you're going to be careful of shade trees. So, <coughs> I mean, the private way is the private way. That's sort of their business. But, but we, we still service, you know, uh, you know, as far as inspections go on those roads, if, if necessary, and we get, if we get any calls, we respond to that and the utility companies generally respond to our request to clean up or repair anything they've done, you know, that on the private way. On the private way. Yeah, and I guess what I'm saying is just, you know, to the extent any of that, you know, dust or excavation or trench cutting or whatever it is, to the, to the extent any of that, um, you know, is outside the private way, I just want to be sure that the expectations that we have for the performance of work, private way or public way, you know, that, that you adhere to kind of that, our, our general code of performance here. I, um, I think I um, included a copy of the, the details of the restoration, the road restoration, in with the, um, the plans. So if, if the plans are approved with that, then those plans are incorporated. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Okay. So we'll see you back. Sure. We'll see you back. Okay. Terrific. I'd like to just take a minute and uh, congratulate Tom Mayo on his new appointment. And I wish him well in that position. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much, Harry. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, Tom. <coughs> okay, uh, next item on the agenda is uh, we've got uh, some appointments. And um, uh, last week we appointed Lynn Barclay to the 4th of July Parade Committee and uh, Chair of the Parade, Jim Murphy, has given the board a list of uh, additional members uh, for the board's consideration for tonight. So. Um, I would uh, make a motion to appoint the following individuals to the 4th of July Parade Committee. Uh, Jim Murphy, Chair, Chief Glenn Olson, George Ford, 
Monica Cunningham, Mary Ellen Layef, DeWitt DeLauder, Tom Hoffman, Gabrielle Rogner, Cassie McDermott, Mark Everett, Maura Richards, Jack Dean, Jeff Lally, Lynn Rayburn, Louis O'Day, Carrie Murphy, John Mons, Dan Layef, Jason Kane, and Bill Fortune. Second. Any further discussion? No, it's a great group, so. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We thank them. I, I noticed last night that the, uh, bullet, the button winner was selected, and nice. the theme this year is uh, a celebration of Hingham volunteers, which is, ah, fantastic. Which is terrific. Fantastic. Um, we have uh, one other vote, which is um, always a good one, to sign the warrant for the 2018 annual town meeting. It will be yellow this year. Yellow. Okay. <laughs> so moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have to say, I'm like a kid at Christmas when my warrant comes in the mail. So, <laughs> really looking forward to seeing that yellow. Well, you'll see this one coming. <laughs> <laughs> a long way off. <laughs> uh, town administrator report. Yes, I have a few things. Um, so the in early March, you'll remember we had a pretty nasty storm on March second and uh, with flooding and, and other um, disruptive events. And as a result, our beach got kind of torn apart. Uh, Lonnie Fournier, through the conservation department, our conservation agent through the conservation department, had organized this past Saturday a volunteer effort of some 40 volunteers wow. showed up on Saturday between That's 10 fantastic. and 2 this past weekend to come down and help clean up the beach, That's clean up the, the debris that, that um, that occurred as a result of that uh, of that storm. So, thank you to all of, all of them, everybody who showed up, and to Lonnie for organizing it. Um, my understanding it was a lot of fun and it was a great event. So, thank you to everyone for doing that. Uh, also, um, I just wanted to let the public know that Jay McGrail, our uh, country club um, director over at the South Shore Country Club has worked for the town for 12 years, has tendered his resignation. He has an opportunity to work closer to home, um, which I can never, uh, I can never bemoan anyone taking that opportunity when it, when it arises. And um, we have posted the, for the position, and I can tell you, I just hope that we find someone with the professionalism and dedication that Jay has shown to this town and to the country club <laughs> specifically. So uh, our best wishes to Jay and, um, and Hopefully we can find someone qualified to fill his shoes. Uh, also, the Army Corps of Engineers will be in town Army. on Thursday night, uh, the 29th at 7 o'clock, for a public information meeting to discuss their plans for unexploded ordinance in Bear Cove Park. Here's hoping there isn't any. So <laughs> <laughs> they're doing investigations down there. They've been planning this for about a year. We've had a couple of public sessions on it. This is the latest one. They're hoping to begin work here now in the late spring and early summer. And um, so this is a, a public meeting, informational meeting, to let the public know what their plans are. Oh, anything? Uh, Lent's almost over. Can't wait for Easter. <laughs> all I have to say. <laughs> uh, I just say I'd like to say that uh, there's a student art show going on at, at uh, Town Hall. It's fabulous. So if you're in the building, you may want to take a, a look around on the different floors because the artwork um, is varied and um, just the talent is astounding. And it just you know the if you come to Town Hall, it's a it's a muted tone on the walls. So when you're walking down the halls now, the color really pops. So it's a uh, it's a good take, as Paul Healy would say. Lift spirits all over the town. Absolutely, it really does. absolutely. Uh, I have three quick things um, to uh, to all the citizens who are either celebrating Easter or Passover. Um, happy Easter, happy Passover. Um, I actually signed the foster statement of interest uh, today, so uh, an electronic signature, and I uh, got an was notified by John Ferris that the town submission has been completed. Great. So Hingham has done everything that it needs to in order to be considered for this next round of funding. And uh, we hope the MSBA will look favorably on our application. And lastly, I received a phone call uh, just a short time before coming to town hall. Um, please mark your calendars for May 20th, which is the Battle of Grape Island event. <laughs> and um, we have a number of citizens who are working to put this day together. It is going to be held this year at the Bathing Beach. 
and um, more details will be on the way, but the bathing beach. The bathing beach. Mm -hmm. So it's clean. Um, <laughs> they're going to need a one-day liquor license or anything? Nope, <laughs> nope. Um, but anyway, that's that's coming up, and you know, it, we we had a we had several volunteers who stepped forward to organize this great event. Um, I'd, I'd also just want to give a shout out to Paula Sordo, who was really just instrumental in in bringing this really special day to Hingham last year, and um, and our thanks and appreciation to the citizens who um, are are willing to. Uh, Work, yeah, work that was to a good make time. It, a tradition. it was a, was it a was really, really a wonderful time. afternoon. So, uh, with that, the board the board will be meeting uh, me. next Tuesday on April third. We will uh, most likely be starting at seven thirty, not at seven, mm. uh, just with the scheduling conflict. Um, and, sure. Uh, so, tell me where and when. Anyway, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. Any further? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night.